Well, good morning, people of God. Woo! And thank you for joining us on this beautiful day the Lord has given us. Amen? Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Dave Parker, and King of Kings is our family of faith. And uh, whether you are joining us for the first time or you've always been with us, welcome. As per my usual announcement, uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion this morning. So if you still need to, take a moment now, get some bread and some grape juice or wine and have that ready following our confession this morning. And as we experience Holy Communion, even though we are not in the same room together, may you feel and experience Jesus still bringing us together as one body of Christ through the gifts of his body and his blood. Amen. A uh, couple quick announcements, just a friendly reminder. Once again, we are back to in-person worship at our 11 o'clock service. We're still airing on the side of safety. Please know that. And out of love for one another, so we wear masks. We, uh, we have the, the room distanced already, so you're all set to go there. Everything's been very well done. Uh, there's no nursery or Sunday school yet, just so you're aware of that. Um, but it, it, was, it has been so amazing to start to see faces again. And when the time comes when you feel ready, know that you are most welcome here. Uh, second announcement. We have uh, an extra reason to celebrate today. Last month, Pastor Kelsey and I uh, recorded four lessons on Holy Communion for those wishing to receive their first communion. Uh, and for all the children and families who participated, we gave them an option. Either they could wait until we commune together in worship again, or they could celebrate their first communion with their families in their homes. And today, Emma Waski will be doing just that. And, and, and this to me is, is even extra special uh, because I was there uh, the day Emma was born. How awesome is that? Uh, also, starting to show my age a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm going to weep when, uh, you know, the kids that I baptized are getting married and having kids of their own or something. I don't know what's going to happen there, but... Um, you may want to just not mention that. <laughs> yeah, right, yes. We're just going to skim right over that. I'm, I'm too young for that. I don't know how that could have happened. Uh, but a uh, special day for Emma, a special day for all of us as we all celebrate Holy Communion with her. But if you would please join me in a special prayer for her today. Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough for the gift of this day. Yet another time to celebrate this Easter resurrection that you have given for each and every one of us. And the promise that you give to us through the gifts of your body and your blood. Bless Emma today as she receives her first communion and her family who are with her and for all of us who get to celebrate this with her to celebrate the amazing gifts that you give to her and to each one of us, the gifts of forgiveness and of new life each and every time. Allow this to be a special and sacred moment for her as well as for each of us every time we experience your body and blood. We ask all this in your holy and precious name and all of God's people say, Amen. We now join our voices in our opening song of praise.
Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever and all of God's people say, Amen. Well, sisters, brothers, dear ones, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to Good Shepherd Sunday where once again we get to hear a a refreshing gospel story filled with promise and with hope and hear a much-needed reminder of the one voice that we need to be listening for. So let's jump right in today to our gospel reading. It comes to us from the book of John, the uh, 10th chapter, starting in verse 11. I invite you to follow along on the screen. Jesus says this, I... And the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay my life down in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I always love Good Shepherd Sunday. There's just so much, especially in our reading for today, so many different ways that we could go with this message. But I heard one in particular scream at me. This week, in a world where good shepherds seem painfully few and Jesus' promises are so desperately needed. The message I heard John speak straight to my heart is this contrast that Jesus offers for us to hear today. The difference between a hired hand and the good shepherd. Hired hands, it turns out, aren't out to destroy the flock but they certainly aren't committed enough to risk their own lives for those sheep. They're pretenders. They're just in it for the cash instead of the genuine care. They have a legitimate and important job to do, but they do it for themselves with little regard for those entrusted to their care. So pretty much sums up what a hired hand is, amen? Okay. Well, this really hit home with me this week. Because the more I read these verses, it led me to realize that there are a lot of hired hands today. Both people and institutions with important roles who seem to have little to no regard for those who they are called to serve. And there are three in particular that uh, I want to share with you today and maybe jog your memory or, or enlighten a little bit, I guess. But three that came to my mind. The first is the marketing-packed world intent on making us feel like we are lacking. Have you heard that voice lately? That hired hand? Driving us to consume or to buy things without even thinking? I get that any economy needs marketing, but it seems to me like marketing has been less about sharing information and more about creating a sense of inadequacy driving us to address real needs that we have through buying their stuff, whether it actually helps or not, right? Whether it's buying a new car, uh, having a new kitchen, new clothes, a new body image, right? There's that message there. You can't be happy because you don't have what we have. 
Which then leads us to what's called retail therapy. <laughs> I'm learning all this stuff this week, right? Where buying things makes us feel like we are feeling better. Oh, and I know you know what I'm talking about here, right? I mean, don't we secretly get a little excited when there's a package on our doorstep? Wondering what it could be? It seems like most marketing has far more interest in, in getting that bottom dollar from us than it does actually about helping us. The voice of this hired hand screams at us every day. A second hired hand is the recent rise and dominance of social media. Again, a means of staying connected with others is so incredibly important and needed. We've seen it firsthand how much we've relied on social media to keep us connected throughout this pandemic. When it became risky to see our loved ones in person, social media was there and came to the rescue. But at the end of the day, the main value in social media corporations isn't to be helpful or humane. It's to make a buck. Their profits are tied completely to how much time we spend on their websites, which has led us to the creation of sophisticated content algorithms designed to identify the things that, that you like to consume, and it amplifies them, right? Right? leading you down a, a deeper and a steeper curve of, of content personalized on getting you to stare at your screen. I know you know that this happens, right? Just jump on Facebook or, or any other website. Click on an advertisement or watch a video on Facebook, and you'll see it in action. Every time I watch a, a video on Facebook, I get past halfway, about three-quarters, more videos like that show up in the queue. It pushes everything else down and adds more just like what I just watched. It's there on purpose, right? Yesterday I was reading the news on my phone. I accidentally clicked an advertisement on a, for a mortgage. Not even interested in a mortgage. Just accidentally click, clicked on it. This morning I woke up with six different companies wanting to provide me with a mortgage. That's the reality in which we live. It's brilliant and it's dangerous. This hired hand has literally taken your voice and spun it right back around at you and amplified it so that you're listening to your own voice of what you think you want or what you think you need. And on top of that, I'm seeing a culture thriving on the necessity of likes and followers. As this metrics now shows somehow that you have worth or value all of a sudden. Which leads to this non-stop need for external praise causing us who create the content, right? To again think only of ourselves and how we can get more likes and followers. Which means the number of sites competing for our attention is, is creating this culture of the outrageous where people will do anything and everything to get people to like them or follow them, where more skin or more absurd has now become the norm. Do we hear this voice in our lives right now, this, this hired hand that is leading us down a very slippery slope? The third hired hand is none other than the Polaroid, uh, polarized and hyper-partisan politics of division. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. I truly believe a, a democratic, republican government is a gift from God. And when it works, politics, which is literally from the Greek word polis, meaning the people or of the people, politics is an absolutely important way by which God cares for us and by which we care for one another. So we need it. But in recent years, we've been invited more so to define ourselves in terms of who or what we are against rather than who or what we are for. Creating this ugly, negative political identity of opposition. And the only thing that leads to is more hatred and more violence. The voice of this hired hand politicizing everything just doesn't stop. 
There are humanitarian issues that all of a sudden have become the right or the left instead of just seeing that we're talking about people. That needs to stop. Paying attention to how things are politically shared, whichever side you may lean, just hear it for yourself this week. Now please notice, I'm not picking a side here. I didn't take a side. I didn't place judgment on any of these. Nor nor am I inviting you to start thinking, yeah, that's exactly what the other side does. No. I'm simply asking us to start paying attention to the voices that are seducing us. Wrestling with what Jesus is saying here led me to acknowledge that all three of these hired hands emphasize the self above others. And all they preach is scarcity, inadequacy, and fear. The messaging is consistent. You do not have enough. You are not enough. You should be afraid. Image is everything. You are what you own, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not sharing all this to scare us this morning. But when I look at the spiking rates of anxiety and depression and hopelessness, especially in our younger generations, I feel like we're being attacked and tempted to follow uh, follow hired hands who are eager to have some followers, but all too ready to abandon those followers in a heartbeat. Are you still with me? I have too many loved ones, people that I truly care about, more worried lately about their own comfort, worried more about what they might lose if someone else gets lifted up, more interested in sharing hatred or something of someone else. These are the voices of hired hands. And in the face of all of this, we get our Bible reading for today from the book of John where Jesus offers himself not as a hired hand, but as the good shepherd who won't abandon his flock, who doesn't run when times get tough, with a very different message. And the proof of his commitment and his devotion to you is simply this. He's willing to lay his own life down on behalf of his sheep. Pure and simple, hired hands don't do that. They'll let you fall on the sword. (laughs) And they'll do that all too happily and move on. Jesus says, "Uh uh-uh. That's not how I roll. In fact, Jesus says it. Sacrificial love is his purpose. It's the source of his power and his enduring examples for all of his followers. He is willing to, and in fact did, give it all for you. To protect you to save your soul, to give you life. And his voice is completely different than all those other voices screaming for your attention today. All those hired hands, they only want what's best for them. And Jesus wants only what's best for others, in particular, for you. Today, Jesus invites you to hear his voice where you are reminded once again of the identity you have been given through his love for you. A voice that drives you to tell others the identity that they've been given through Jesus Christ as well. Those darn hired hands have been so loud lately, we are forgetting who and whose we are. You and I, dear ones, we have a mission today. Every day to not only receive the promises of the good shepherd and be reminded once again of our identity as a sheep of God's fold and a lamb of God's own flock but also to offer a different message in the face of those hired hands that you are enough so totally enough you are more than enough for yourself and and more to boot You are beloved by God. How much more value and worth do you need than that? The God of the cosmos loves you. We don't need likes or followers for that. That's value. You are not lacking. You are not inadequate. You need not fear. 
for your good shepherd who laid down his life and had the power to take it back up again is with you and he is for you forever. That's who and whose you are. You are worth being loved. Listen to that voice this week. The voice of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, calling out to remind you once again that in the face of scarcity and inadequacy and of fear, you are a beloved child of God and that you are enough. And if you start forgetting that, replay this sermon or this message on our website. Ha! We're going to use social media against itself. And as you hear these voices, and the voice of Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, speaking the words of love to you throughout this week, dare to tell someone else that they are loved as well, because we are so desperately in need of the voice of a good shepherd these days. May you hear Jesus' voice in your life. May you be willing to amplify that voice for someone else. Amen? Amen. Once again, we join our voices in our next song of the day.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. At the end of each prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Loving shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Lay to rest any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and all those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. We now take a moment to reflect on our week and confess those times when we have failed to live as God invites us to live. Please repeat after me. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined. Mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in your spirit to better follow Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you, you so love. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. And now hear this, dear children of God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given over to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by God's authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say, Amen. I now invite you to take out your bread and the wine or the grape juice that you have available as we prepare our hearts to receive the gifts of Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. At this time, I invite you to take the hands of those who you are worshiping with or to extend your hands across the Internet as we pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, as you are either communing yourself or those whom you are with, I invite you to take the bread and to use these words. The body of Christ given for you. And now as you either hand out or commune yourself with the grape juice or the wine, I invite you to use these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. People of God, May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. And all of God's people say, Amen. And Emma, may the gifts of Jesus' body and blood always be special and life-giving throughout all of your days. Amen. And finally, thank you for prayerfully giving to King of Kings to support our ministries and the amazing work our people do here. At the end of the service, there's a QR code. You can use your cell phone uh, and the camera portion. It'll take you right to our, our giving page um, to support all the amazing things that happen here. Your generosity makes all of this happen. And so thank you for being a blessing for each of us. We join our voices in our final song of praise.
blessing beforehand because now I don't have a voice. <laughs> so people of God, may you receive this blessing in addition to the one that you just received. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That just doesn't get old yet, huh? All right. Until we meet again, may you be blessed. Amen.